Hey guys, welcome back. Robocraft Early Access coverage. This is episode 65, I'm Enigmius, and today, more match footage in Pretty Hate Machine. We're talking about aggression. Bit of a theme. We we're trying to come up with a theme for our episodes, but it doesn't always work that, that way. In this case, it does. This is a pretty good example. We've got three matches that show what happens when you play with aggression, what happens when you don't play with aggression, and then something in between, because the, the first two matches are kind of wonky. Now, in this case, our team is pushing up hard. Like, they're cutting through the middle there, like, right after it, up the valley. Gonna be on the enemy's side of the map before the enemy is even set up on the ridge. Which in some cases can be uh, a little bit reckless if you're just doing it by yourself or in small groups but when your whole team does it it can kind of throw things off because there's there's always a psychological aspect there's the, what the enemy is expecting and when you give them what they're not expecting sometimes it takes them a while to kind of adjust throws them off off their game a little bit and sometimes that's all it takes to score a win so i generally when we start on that the side of the map that we did I'll come up this side a little bit cautiously because I want to see who's coming up the corner, but these guys aren't having any of that. And it was to the point where there were two things that motivated me to move up as quickly as I could to uh, support them. One, is it's just the, the good thing to do when you're playing as part of a team, to push up to support your team. And also, I was afraid with the way these guys were going that if I didn't, I was gonna, wasn't going to get any points. Oh, balloon. Balloon on a rock. There he goes. <laughs> It's gone. That easy. The enemy's still got some guys over there. They've got one guy off trying to capture our base. Not smart at this stage of the game. Yeah, we pushed up as a team, but we're still strong as a team, which means we can afford to send one, two, three guys back to finish him off. And it's not really going to create so much of an issue for us that these guys down here are going to have much of a chance to do anything. So I'm just kind of going back and forth trying to figure out where I can be useful. This is not really the ideal spot to be in a hover on a downslope like this because you're limited in how you can shoot down. Just the depression on plasma is, is quite poor. It helps if you kind of lower yourself down to the ground. That way the, the whole bot kind of tilts down when you're on the slope and you can shoot down a little bit easier. But in this case, there's a guy on the far side there. I'm doing my best to keep him honest. You don't want to leave guys like that free to just kind of lob plasma at our team all the time just constantly throughout the match uncontested because if you do you pay for it sooner or later so we've got a little bit of everything down here we've got the healers you'll notice the medics are pushing up with us we're here on the front lines we're able to shoot at the enemy we're also able to receive repairs from our medics and the medics don't have to be in the line of fire to do it this is pretty much the ideal situation for medics to be in where your frontline shooters are close enough that you can do your repairs without putting yourself in harm's way. Eventually, we kind of chip away to the point where there's only one bot left. So we push up and it's just kind of a feast. It's an orgy of who gets the kill. Just everyone just all over that bot. The poor guy. I, I bet he was traumatized after that. Now, this is the opposite. Now, I don't know why they put a spawn point up here. I think it might have something to do with the concerns about boss battles. I don't know. It's just, it's not a very good, I don't like it. I understand that based on the layout of the map, they probably had to put some spawn points up here. Or it would be just too crowded, but I spawn up there and I'm kind of thinking, okay, well, what's my team going to do? I'm not advancing up that side by myself as a plasma bot because that's kind of silly. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to see what's going on with my team. Well, looking at the mini map, they're they're kind of not really doing much of anything. They're they're spreading out a little bit, just a little bit. But nobody seems to want to commit to venturing out from this little network of valleys and stuff immediately around our base. This is the opposite of aggression. This is just kind of sitting on our hands, waiting for the enemy to come to us, and they will. Oh yes, they will. Now I'm kind of thinking again at this point that I'm I'm not a frontline bot. I, I can take some damage due to the way the bot is designed, but I'm not a frontline bot. So when I'm kind of pushed up and I'm seeing all kinds of enemies appearing in front of me, there's nothing wrong with turning around and saying, screw this, I'm going to kind of take a, set, a, a seat in the back until you guys get your act together and we actually get some, uh, some forward offense. This guy kind of 
I don't know about these Tesla coil bots that just kind of fly down and whack people and then sit there and wait to die. I guess maybe they can turn the tide. I, I just, I wouldn't want to play one of those bots because you're basically sacrificing yourself in every match. Like, how do you get your daily bonus? Do you not do anything? You just kind of hide in the back and wait for the last enemy bot and you swoop down and nail them. But now you can see this valley is just swarming with bad guys. Our guys are all hiding. There's just not enough going on here for us to be able to say that we're kind of earning a victory. I did not get a hero bonus from that match. It was just bad. They, they never left the base. They just kind of sat around and waited until the enemy came to us. It's possible we could have gone around and flanked them where they were, but you can't make that decision. As, at the point when you realize the enemy is all basically swarming that location, you can't just immediately make the decision to flank them because they're going to follow you or they're going to see you and they're going to be expecting it. They haven't committed into that valley yet, so it's, it's iffy. It's an iffy call. Now, this is another case of uh, what was a really strong match for me pushing up early to see what's going on again not a frontline fighter but that doesn't mean that I can't leverage the speed of my box to push up and kind of get a handle on what's going on ahead of us and at this point right here I'm feeling like this match is probably uh, not going to go so well just because I've already lost like the front chunk of my box and I'm you know coming back looking for where my support might be and they're taking forever and a goddamn day to get up here. Can't you can't dawdle. I don't know what I don't I don't understand why people dawdle like that. I don't understand why someone takes a little bit of damage from a bomber on his way by doing a scouting pass, and then all of the medics stop to heal that guy instead of pushing up to the front. It's a little bit silly. In this case, we managed to kind of recover from it, but you'll notice how I'm making use of the cover here. I kinda of duck out, take a shot, miss duck back in, duck out, take a shot, get a nice hit on a few bots. They're kind of all clustered together, but they're not presenting much of an offense. They've basically got some plasma, they got some, you know, I don't even know. All we're seeing is every seven seconds the plasma guy shoots, and the rest of the guys behind them, not really a presence. Not really, I got a walker stepping all over me, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what his problem is. I got a guy blocking my reverse lane. It's one of these sort of situations where you kind of have to forgive people a little bit for the, the derpy kind of mashed them together because this is a small space that we're working in and all I can really do is kind of keep working back and forth into and out of cover, hope that my team doesn't... See, what happens when you block someone's reverse lane is that when they're trying to get back into cover, you're not allowing them to do that, so they're taking more damage than they intended to take and not really push forward. You're essentially helping to kill your teammates by not allowing them to reverse. Now you see here we've got a railgunner trying to be clever, working around the flank. Railgunner's just a little something for you. Um, that, that beam of light makes it difficult for you to be an effective flanker. See, what happens when you flank, especially when you come around behind the enemy team, is if you're smart, uh, SMG and Plasma, for example, you're going to fire only at the guys that are at the very back end, and you're hoping that nobody else on their team notices, and you can pick them apart from the back to the front much easier than if the entire team knows you're there because you've got this red laser that just shines over all of them from the back side and they say, oh crap, there's a problem. So it didn't take much to push the railgunner away a little bit, and now all of a sudden the enemy too late is presenting an offensive front. Now we've got their interceptors pushing up and kind of harassing us at the cave mouth. We've already kind of done a number on them. Like, we've taken almost half their bots, more than that, it's hard to see as I'm recording the commentary exactly how many. But th they're not in very good shape. And this is a case where now our healers, much like the, the other match, they're able to repair people who are on the front line without putting themselves in harm's way. And this puts them at a tremendous advantage because we can keep putting out that damage. We can keep pushing that offensive presence. And these guys are just kind of flipping and flopping all over the damn place. I could never play a bot that you can't control properly, because these guys, it's a thing. People love them, I'm not one of those people. This guy smacked out into the middle of crap. That's called overextending. <laughs> when you basically land yourself in the middle of the, the enemy team. I notice, again, listening as we go, there's a sound that indicates someone is capturing a base somewhere. 
and we look up and we see that the blue line is advancing. So we need to do something about that. And all it takes is this poor little bastard is one shot and he's gone. I don't intend to take this guy on by myself because even though those bots are hard to control, he's got that constant stream of damage. He's also in the air and he's kind of moving erratically, which puts me at a tremendous disadvantage. So I'm, again, there's no shame in, in bolting back to the rest of the team so that everyone can help you take out this guy because he's really one of the very few guys that are left. So like I say, this was a really strong match for me. I got a decent amount of CPU damage done, uh, three kills, two assists, and I think some spotting points as well. I was pretty happy with that. So that's aggression. Just three examples of what happens when you, when you push forward, when you're constantly pushing as opposed to sitting on your hands waiting for things to happen. We're going to be doing kind of a guide series for beginners, not series, but video, and that's going to be one of the things that's going to be covered is aggression and making sure at all times that you're thinking with a mind to how and when can we push forward as opposed to just sitting and waiting to defend. These rail gunners with the down-tiered guns need to really get their shit together because that's not doing anything to me except making me think, <laughs> dumbass, get better guns. We're going to do lots more videos. I've actually got a SMG um, cruiser that I'm building, of all things. Just messing around with a little bit of asymmetric building. Uh, we've got the beginner's guide coming up. We've got more match footage. And, of course, we are going to finish the Panther Bee sooner or later. So if you want to be notified when those videos are added, you can always subscribe to my channel or follow me on the social media. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.